It's race day! I'm Samurai TX and we are racing at the Brasilia Grand Prix um, on the race weekend mode. We did qualify second as um, Felipe Massa, who is set to retire once again um, after the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, so he is racing his final Brazilian Grand Prix. And we qualified second behind Fernando Alonso, so I'm looking forward to this race. It's been um, seven years since I last raced on this track. So, um, yeah, um, I was running behind schedule, so I decided to skip qualifying and just do the race itself and do the race um, qualifying um, off screen. So I did qualify second, which is good. So um, Barrichello got third, by the way, so the Brazilians have something to cheer about. So um, I was stopped for this 15 lap race. It's a one stop strategy. We're going to stop on lap 8 or 15. I hope to make it that far anyway. But um, I'm pretty excited because I haven't raced here for a very long time. So. Um, Let's see how it goes, but without further ado, we need to know the grid positions and whatnot, so I'm going to pass you over to Martin Brundle. So, Martin, you can take it away. Don't go anywhere. We're only minutes away from the start of the Brazilian Grand Prix, coming to you live from Interlagos. They are serious about their motorsport here in São Paulo. They adore their heroes like Fittipaldi, Senna, Massa and Barrichello. It's another classic circuit, Interlagos. Anti-clockwise, very quick and there are several genuine overtaking opportunities. Thankfully it's dry here, but the temperature has dipped somewhat. Lining up on pole is Fernando Alonso. Second on the grid is Felipe Massa. Rubens Barrichello is just behind them in third. Michael Schumacher is next. In fifth place is Jensen Button. Kimi Raikkonen is next to him in sixth. Giancarlo Fisichella is seventh. Jano truly occupies eight on the grid. Thank you, Martin. Ninth is Heidfeld, tenth is Montoya, eleventh is Ralph Schumacher, twelfth is Rosberg, Cleon thirteenth, Fiona fourteenth, Coulthard fifteenth, UC sixteenth, Weber seventeenth, Albers eight, um, Speed eighteenth, Albers nineteenth, Sato twentieth, Montero twenty first, and Ide last place. So just like the usual, I'm going to um, do this formation lap off screen, and um, when you see the video next time, I will be on the grid. So. I will see you later. Don't go anywhere. Turn up the volume and enjoy. Here we go. The five lights are up. And... It's a great start by Felipe Massa, who just completely um, surprised Fernando Alonso as he was on the clean side of um, the clean side of the track. And Massa's already ran wide. Going into the center S's. What a start by Felipe Massa. What a great start by Rubens Barrichello as well, who's in second place. Fernando Alonso has had a disastrous start, dropping two places already um, as um, we've passed um, three turns. Barrichello's having to go at Massa, and be careful, Barrichello. You don't want the Brazilians hitting each other. Be very careful. But the Brazilians have gone wild as Felipe Massa and Rubens Barrichello lead the Brazilian 1 2. With Fernando Alonso third, Michael Schumacher fourth, Kimi Raikkonen fifth. Great start by Kimi, who's moved up a place. Schumacher didn't really make any improvements, but Alonso is the big loser who dropped from first to third immediately. Massa's running a bit wide. I think he's put he's under peer pressure from Rubens Barrichello. And this is the first lap, so um, it's going to be a bit nervy for me as a racer as well, because I haven't raced around it since Formula 1 2010. And I've gone back straight to 2006. So yeah, different car, different regulations and whatnot. So yeah, it's going to be a bit tougher for me. But um, it's on a medium difficulty because um, that's just my level right now, to be honest with you. As you can tell, as you saw, uh, my lap was a 117 before we started the race. And um, the lap record is 1 minute 11. And I am no way achieving that. At best, I think I can achieve probably a 113, 114. So... Yeah, I'm definitely not on the level that many people think I am. But, um, sorry, let James take this over. Massa is first. He's up from second. Alonso is second. Third is Barrichello. Fourth, Michael Schumacher. Truly fifth. Jensen Button in sixth. He's down from fifth. In seventh is Raikkonen. And Fisichella eighth. Wow, Kimi Raikkonen. His grid position. Well, Kimi Raikkonen fell two places already. Well, 
Well, David Coulthard had an incident with Nico Rosberg there, but I did notice um, on the grid, um, somebody did actually have an engine failure, actually. But I was too busy trying to concentrate on my race to take the lead up or not. So, yeah, um, I guess it's a Midland that actually had an engine failure on the grid, which is kind of disappointing for the Midland team. Thank you, Engineer. We're four seconds up already on our first lap. Nearly five seconds, to be honest. So that was a great lap there. But um, I, I can do better. But this is the second lap, and I'm trying to take it easy around this track. There's debris that from Coulthard's collision with Nico Rosberg. And while James Allen was talking about the positions, careful of the debris, um, Alonso did overtake Barrichello for second place. So Barrichello is now third. So, um... Uh, been an okay start for Rubens Barrichello, but Mass is the biggest winner of all, to be honest. Because he's just ran away with this lead. And the Brazilian crowd are just excited. And Mass has run wide again. Let's hope he just doesn't do this. Um, let's hope it's not a common thing for him. Because if he does, um, it's going to be um, a long, long day. And he's going to have Fernando Alonso pressuring him down his neck. And he does not want Fernando Alonso breathing down his neck, because then that would be just be even worse and he will just lead to more mistakes. We don't want um, Brazilians Felipe Massa making a mistake in his home race. That would be terrible. Especially considering he had a great start on the grid. So we're heading into lap 4 of this race and Massa's gone fast again. And the engineers decided to interrupt my commentary but thank you for that. Thanks for that engineer again. Now, he's carrying more fuel on board than Alonso. So all he needs to do is sit behind him until he makes his stop. He should be a little quicker without so much fuel in his tank. If he can keep going for a few more laps, he should get past. That's assuming he can get a few more laps out of it, of course. Thank you, Martin. So yes, this is the battle for second place they were talking about between um, Barrichello and Fernando Alonso. Alright, James was telling the positions while I was trying to talk. I just let him talk over the positions because we're about to finish the lap anyway. Wow, Martin Brondo and James Allen really are vocal today, and me as well, you know. We all are interested in the uh, battle for second place, but I'll let them take over since I'm on board with Felipe Massa right now. And in the process of him extending his lead um, to Barrichello, he's also caught up to Felipe Massa, and now he's under one second behind Felipe Massa. We can see the mechanics preparing from our commentary box window. Barrichello was able to reduce the gap that time. The gap is now down to 2.4 seconds. Well, it seems um, James Allen said that there's a um, comment, um, pits, pits um, crew out. Is that for Fernando Alonso? Because they said Barrichello's heavily fueled. So that must be for Fernando Alonso. I was about to say um, commentary crew. I was like, wait, what? Commentary crew in the pit lane? <laughs> but yeah, I'm messing up on my commentary because um, I'm just interested in the battle for second place because this is great for Brazilians with two Brazilians on the podium. We don't want to curse Barrichello yet because 1999, he was leading the race and his engine failed on him. And then 2003, once again, he was leading the race and once again, he retired. So we don't want to curse Barrichello. We actually want Barrichello to get the podium. So let's see what happens. Whether it's third or second, it's up to him. And Felipe Massa just does a 114.9. Great, great lap. And Fernando Alonso is in the pit lane. So it was for um, Fernando Alonso. And Barrichello now has to keep pushing because he has more um, fuel in the car. So let's see who takes advantage of Fernando Alonso's pit stop. It's so early for the Renault. Once again, the Renaults are pitting very early. Uh, we witnessed this in San Marino, and um, they lost out big time um, to DC and um, others, you know, um, in the previous video I did. So, um, Renault making early pit stops, this might come back to bite them, you know. 
But this is lap six, and Felipe Massa's just um, taking it easy. The tyres are beginning to wear out on him, so we're going to have to be a bit more gentle around the track. We are, we do have a gap ahead of us, so we do have time to be a bit um, gentle and try and slow down. But um, slowing down isn't in Felipe Massa's DNA right now, since he's in this home track, and he's made a mistake. The red tyres really are giving up on him, and he's made a mistake. So yeah, we've got to be very careful. It's either we pit um, in the next lap, which is lap seven, or take the lap eight pit stop and um, box on lap eight but um smarter decision would tell you to pit this lap and a silly decision and risky one would tell you to pit the next lap where you would be having less grip and you might make more mistakes lepe massa is contemplating it how by the way he's complaining on the team radio saying that his tires are gone And there's the engineer telling us to pit stop, but Felipe Massa is currently contemplating whether to pit this lap or um, next lap. And he's already called in. The Ferrari mechanics are coming out now, preparing for Felipe Massa. Alright, so that's our pit stop. We have queued the pit stop window. I think Michael Schumacher has pitted a lap before us. So, um, yeah, this is definitely us. We're not going to double stack, which is good. Oh dear, that is not what Fernando Alonso wants to hear, you know, with Barrichello extending this gap. He's taken advantage of a lighter fuel car while Fernando's one's heavy. So Barrichello definitely is going to um, take advantage of this and hopefully he ends up um, overcutting um, overcutting Alonso. And Barrichello and Massa comes in the pit lane with the crowd cheering, hoping their pit stop goes well. So Felipe Massa now parks into his pit stop right now. Let's see how it goes. So far, so good for Felipe Massa. And it's 10.1 seconds and he's out. Is he going to get ahead of Barrichello? Yes, he is. And um, where's Barrichello? Barrichello's out now. So Barrichello has um, closed the gap down to Massa. And Massa's about to exit the pit lane. And Alonso's flying past the commentary pit box. Will he be ahead of Barrichello? Massa's ran wide in the pit lane. Oh dear, he's forgot to exit the pit lane. Well, I have actually, to be honest. Not Massa, but me. And um, Felipe Massa has ended up ahead of Fernando Alonso. Has Barrichello? Yes, he has! Barrichello is ahead of Felipe uh, Fernando Alonso. Oh dear, terrible commentary by me there. Almost mistaken in me for Bar Fernando Alonso. It's because it's cause, um, that was very important there. And um, all three drivers are close to each other. So that was a great pit stop by Honda and Ferrari. Mostly Honda to get ahead of Fernando Alonso for that podium. We have um, Liuzzi, Clean, and um, let's see who else. Um, I think we also have Scott Speed out there and um, Super Guri. So currently we got got um, like four drivers in front of us that we aren't really racing. They're going to pit this lap likely because, um, well... It is um, everyone's pitted basically so um, yeah everyone's gonna be pitting right this lap um, well the last four runners so Cleon's gonna pit, Ryuzi's gonna pit um, and the other two I think it's a Super Guri and a Midland so I'm gonna guess that's Albers that's in the pits as well so now um, Button is second oh Button and Kimi Raikkonen pitted okay so Kimi Raikkonen was on a heavier strategy and so was Jensen Button how did that work out for both of them well, Button is fifth, so that's worked out very well for him. And um, re he's regained fifth place, and Kimi Raikkonen, I don't know where he is. But either way, um, everything's normal, except Barrichello's jumped Alonso in the pits. And Michael Schumacher's closed the gap down to Fernando Alonso as well, because he was trailing Fernando Alonso in the first stint of the race. Now he's closed the gap down, because he has um, had a better pit stop than him. And he's on um, his tyres probably are warmer than Fernando's. You know, Fernando's still struggling for grip. Thank you, engineer. So it looks like um, our um, tyres are very hot, and it looks like we can just go and um, just race, you know, just um, do a lap, do a lap um, <laughs> of, like, probably just break the lap time, you know, probably do our fastest lap of the race, that's what I was trying to say. But again, my commentary is just becoming muddled up, because I'm just so excited at the same time. But um, we're winning this race, we've been in the lead since lap one, which is very good. 
I'm surprised to be honest with you, but I don't want to speak too soon because um, we still got six more laps to finish, so I don't want to make a mistake. I'm going to try and keep it nice and composed. Doing live commentary while racing is pretty tough, and especially live commentating and trying to, um, you know, talk over the race. Right now we're focusing on our race, even though I am interested in the um, thing um, battles behind me, because right now um, Barry Kello is currently uh, 2.6 seconds behind me and not really putting much pressure onto me. Juan Pablo Montoya has really had a quiet race. He started 10th and he's only 8th. That's one thing you don't want to do when you're um, qualifying here in Brazil. You don't want to start in the midfield because the midfield is where collision happens, you know. If you start in like the 5th row and whatnot, you are destined to have trouble behind you and probably attack you. So yeah, you don't want to start at the uh, mid mid um, midfield pack or even the back. You don't want to start there at all when you um, qualify here because... Incidents happen on the, the first two turns. It's ridiculous. You really don't want to be there. You'd rather be on the second to um, third to second to first row, um, the, like from first to sixth. You'd rather start there because then you can avoid it unless you have a terrible start. But um, yeah, you just don't want to be in the midfield pack when um, you start the race here because incidents happen everywhere. No, um, that um, that Midland that had a, I think it was a Midland anyway that had an engine failure caused a lot of traffic when everyone was getting off the grid, you know. So it was really bad. Right, so that's the position to get. Nothing's really changed, and we're um, heading to turn six, and then we're um, turn seven, and then this should be turns eight and nine right now yeah i really love that i really love this track but i'm not really good at it you know compared to others i can't really do a 111 but back in the day i used to because i used to play this religiously you know f1 games i used to i used to be all over it but now i play it moderately like um sometimes when i'm in the moods you have to be really in a good mood but um, i reckon if i was to play this regularly i probably would um be very competitive and actually do um the best difficulty in the game, but um, for me, I can't really do that because of the fact that I'm just so inconsistent with um, my um, playing with this game. But maybe I need to go back into F1 because I've always had a passion for watching it and playing it, but you know, sometimes I just have other projects. So, like, um, when the season ends, I might do a career mode and just see how it goes. You know, if it goes bad, then it goes bad. If it goes great, it goes great. So again, the positions really haven't changed. And Massa set the fastest first sector, his personal best. So it looks like he is going for it now. And to set the fastest lap, his fastest lap is um one fourteen point nine. So um, he's not really set a fastest lap since lap. Five? I think it was lap five that he did it, but Felipe Massa currently is holding the lead and um, he's really comfortably ahead. He's three tenths slow there, but he still has a chance to have a good final sector to actually do a great lap. So he's currently um, 8.7 seconds ahead of Barrichello and 10.2 sorry, ahead of Fernando Alonso in third. So as uh, Massa's got um, three laps left right now, and he's done a one minute fourteen point three five one. So his laps are getting faster and faster. Don't, don't, oh, Felipe Massa just hit the barrier. He's so lucky not to lose his tyre. He just kissed that barrier around the centre S, and that was dangerous. Because if he if he had a bigger impact and was going at a faster speed, he could have lost his tyre, and that could have been it for him. It would have been a, such a sad ending for Felipe Massa. Oh, this is tense with three laps to go. Michael Schumacher is closing the gap down, um, hunting Fernando Alonso down for the podium. It's kind of, um, it kind of um, is kind of like a tale of 2006 where Michael Schumacher spent most of it chasing Fernando Alonso because them two were competing in the championship that year. Michael Schumacher's supposed final year, well, his first. His first uh, retirement, anyway, season. 2006 was his first retirement season. 2012 was his second retirement season. So, 
It's always like legends coming back, you know. No, well, not coming, not legends coming back. It's always like they, like when people say that when they retire and they don't. Felipe Massa, Michael Schumacher came back. Felipe Massa said he was retiring, then he signs a contract with Williams, and then he's back. So yeah, a lot of drivers tend to do that. So Felipe Massa is now officially 10.5 seconds ahead of Rubens Barrichello on the penultimate lap. Massa's almost made a mistake. He's got to be careful here. Oh. So the lead should be down to 1.1 seconds now between the two of them. We won't know the gap because of the fact that Massa's gone and normally I rely on the gaps of the um, delta on the left side of my screen. But unfortunately I can't really see it because um, it only goes 10.5 seconds of Barrichello. We're on the penultimate lap there. So Massa um, gets past turn 15 right now. And now he's um, on the final start finish straight to actually start his final lap. So... It definitely should be um, a final lap Massa should really enjoy. <laughs> I just love the engineer's um, complete motivation. Like, please bring it home! It's like, you know, it's his home race. Let's just yell and motivate him on, you know? Let's just hope he actually finishes this race. 1.3 seconds between Michael Schumacher and Fernando Alonso. This should be a great battle to the end of the race for the podium. So now it's 1.2 seconds between Fernando Alonso and Michael Schumacher. As we are currently on board with Felipe Massa, even though we've been on board with him throughout the entire race, but let's just pretend we wasn't on board with him. We're on board with the race leader, Felipe Massa, as he's... Um, Racing down the final lap as um, he's past sector 2 right now. And now he's heading into turn um, 13. Now he's in turn 14. Heading into turn 15 now. There we go. That's the final turn of the race. There we go. Turn 15. And Felipe Massa is um, driving down the start. Finish straight right now. And Felipe Massa has sent the Brazilians wild as he wins the Brazilian Grand Prix. Races past the chequered flag with a maximum 10 points and top spot on the podium. Finishing in second is Barrichello. It's been a fascinating season with all manner of twists and turns to the story. It's been a wonderful journey for me and a real privilege to cover this season for you. With all the new rules and regulations, it's been challenging at times, but I think you agree what we're seeing here is a firm indication that the good times are back for Formula One. So, all that's left for me to say is thank you for sticking with us and goodbye from all of us here at Sao Paulo, Brazil. We'll be back next year in the spring for another season of Formula One racing. Goodbye, and as always, take care. Take care, Martin. Thank you very much. What a result for the Brazilians, as it's a 1-2 for Barrichello and Massa. Massa winning his first Brazilian Grand Prix and Barrichello getting his, I think his first podium in Brazil, actually. What a great, what a great um, race for him. And it was um, a Midland that actually was at the start of the grid that actually had problems. So I was right there with the engine failure. So good thing I was correct there. But there's your race finishes and your retirements. Truly, Speed, Heidfeld and Montero with David Kufa being lapped. Anyway, we're going to go to the podium as um, the Brazilian national anthem is about to be played. Hope you all enjoy. I shall see you after the podium celebrations. Oh, that was fantastic, man. Um, it felt good racing around this track for the first time in seven years. And then I still need work to do because of the fact that I'm still off the pace when it comes to actual lap records. One in minute 11 and I was um, three seconds off the pace. I still got to make up those three seconds when I practice. But 
for now I'm going to stick with medium difficulty but I'm very delighted personally for me that um, I did um, come back to this track and um, came back with only just qualifying as practice and I came back and won qualifying second and won from there um, the race was a bit tough I'm not gonna lie I did make plenty of mistakes but personally for me I'm very delighted that I won the race because um, for me I found it important that I would um, get grips of the track in qualifying and whatnot I didn't do practice, I went straight to qualifying, I just did lots of laps in the qualifying and it went very well for me, so I'm very pleased um, at the fact that um, I did very well there. But now let's talk about the um, Brazilian Grand Prix, so um, Valtteri Bottas is pole position with the Ferraris second and third, Lewis Hamilton is nowhere to be seen as he crashed during his first lap of qualifying, so he starts at the back of the grid, but I won't count him out because I'm pretty sure he would want to um, get a podium and whatnot um, during this racetrack because this is um, the home race of his hero. And Felipe Massa, big shout out to him, he's ninth. I hope he finishes this time in his um, final Brazilian Grand Prix. But for now, um, hope you guys enjoy the Brazilian Grand Prix. My predictions are that um, Ferrari will um, win with Sebastian Vettel and Bottas will be second with Kimi Raikkonen third. So uh, that's my predictions. But this is Samurai TX signing out for another episode of Formula 1. Until then, until then. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys the next Formula 1 video when I do one in two weeks time. Enjoy the race and take care everybody. Goodbye.